All right, in this video, we're going to begin talking about um, regulation of gene expression. And so we need to first define what is gene expression in order to do that. And gene expression is basically when a gene that is located on the DNA is transcribed and translated to become a protein. That gene has become expressed, and that protein is now doing the thing that the gene had instructions for. And so uh, it's similar to if you um, open up a model or something like that, and then you build that model according to the instructions, you have expressed the intent of those instructions, and you now have a physical thing that you are working with. And so <clears throat> the same kind of thing here, you have a protein that is now able to go and do whatever thing that protein does. And so there are various ways in prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells to regulate the expression of genes, meaning uh, make them express faster or more or inhibit them from expressing altogether. So one of these things is called a regulatory sequence, and you find this particularly in prokaryotic cells with something called an operon. We're going to talk about that in the next video exclusively. And uh, the regulatory sequence is just a stretch of DNA, as you can see here, that has some, um, like has a promoter, which, I mean, you can just think of the word promoter, right? It's going to promote something, um, and it's going to have an operator. It's going to have these different genes, like Z, like Y, like A. Those are three different genes. And so a regulatory sequence is going to have multiple genes on it, and there's going to be the presence of some kind of uh, molecule that is going to induce or inhibit the production of these genes. And so that's what we're going to talk about in the next video. And so this is just kind of an overview of a regulatory sequence. Big idea here is that you have this massive sequence of genes that are all about one sort of thing, and they're being regulated by the presence of or the uh, lack of a molecule. The next is called epigenetic changes. So epigenetics, um, <clears throat> you know, the word epi means like on. And so this is kind of like um, doing something to the genes from the outside. All right. And specifically in this class, this is going to refer to um, these little protein, proteins called histones. And so you can see here there's a chromosome. This chromosome is becoming unraveled. Looks like a phone cord. And then you get into the micro detail here. How is it all raveled up? Well, the reason that it's all raveled up is because there are these histone proteins that it is kind of bound up on like tiny little spools of thread, which allows the DNA to coil. The DNA cannot be expressed if it is coiled up on these histones. Um, and so there are chemicals like this here, epigenetic factor that can bind to the histones and cause that DNA to uncoil, thus allowing a particular gene to become accessible. The opposite can also be true. This is where you have something called methylation, and that methylation actually causes that portion of DNA to be closed up. And so this is something from the outside that is landing on the DNA in order, or you know, on the histone in this particular case, in order to um, cause that gene to be expressed or not. Cell differentiation. A uh, big idea here is that uh, in multicellular organisms, <clears throat> you're going to have more than one cell, hence the name, and not all of those cells are going to be doing the same thing. And so uh, in order for a cell to do a different thing than, say, its friend next door, uh, there has to be different proteins that are being made. And the other cell can't make those proteins. You know, think about a muscle cell and a skin cell. They both have the same g genetic info. You, you came from one cell at one point. And so that one cell made all of your, how many ever trillion cells you're made out of. Um, so it has the entire library of instructions on how to make you. However, the skin cells have stopped making muscle cell things and bone cell things. It doesn't mean that they don't know how, they just don't ever make them. They've stopped doing it. And so when you have cell differentiation, you have a vast majority of the genetic um, code that is being repressed or being inhibited from being expressed. There's no reason for a skin cell to start expressing bone things. There's just no reason for that. And so um, 
this is why you have groups of cells that will form, you know, like a tissue, which a tissue is a group of similar kinds of cells. And um, again, this all has to do with gene expression. Um, and so this, this is kind of showing you pluripotent cell. A pluri means like more than, potent means strong, like strength. And so pluripotent cells can become, are able to, uh, hence that potent, are able to become many things. And so this, these are like stem cells, right? And they can become anything based on the genes that they transcribe and the genes that they um, don't transcribe. And then lastly is transcription factors. Transcription factors are factors that inhibit or repress the, um, the process of transcription. Remember, transcription is taking the DNA and making from it a messenger RNA, which will then be translated on the ribosome. And so here you have a couple of examples of transcription factors. You have some activators. An act, what does an activator do? It's going to start something, right? What does a repressor do? It's going to stop something. And so the combination of these two activators here, look, transcription, lots of transcription happening. Uh, just one of the activators, well, maybe some transcription, but not so much. All three things there, the, the repressor is going to say, nope, no transcription. And so you kind of get the idea here. There can be multiple factors that can slow, speed up, or completely stop the process of transcription.